All right. You ready? Two more minutes. Good evening. Um, we are glad you are with us. Welcome to our final event for Black History Month 2024. Um, we are we have been celebrating art as resistance. I am Charlotta Green, uh, the host for tonight. Uh, I am working with the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. Our leader and director is Dr. Gabriela Miramontes. Um, and uh, we have a wonderful staff. I am a graduate assistant in the center. And so we present each month Cultural Heritage Month um, to celebrate all of the heritages that make us who we are in this country. Next month, we will kick off that starting tomorrow, Women's History Month. So our first event starts at 5.30 tomorrow. So if you're able to make it, we'll love to have you make it. Um, have you join us. Um, all of our events are usually either hybrid or Zoom. And so we try to make it accessible for all of our people. Um, we also in the center provide uh, leadership opportunities to get certifications. And so we have a number of events coming up, one in April, the 19th and 20th, Leadership Academy that'll be in West LA on campus and um, other leadership certificates. So if you go to our site, you'll be able to find out more about those. But tonight, we're excited to have Joseph and Denise Gordon um, with us as we celebrate art as resistance. And we're talking about culinary arts. And this is a way of decolonizing our tongues and moving us back to um, becoming more familiar with food in its natural uh, read the source as, as far as it, we are concerned so that we're not eating all of the uh, processed stuff that we often get and the fast food. Um, they are going to show us how to enjoy cooking um, and enjoy making something healthy. As a couple, this is their ministry. This is a family ministry um, of really and truly reclaiming your health. Um, and learning to enjoy not just cooking, but enjoying food and tasting it. Um, and so they may tell you a little bit more about themselves and you're more than welcome to read their bios on our site. Um, but I think it's important for you to get to know the people based on what they do. And so what I know of them, I have enjoyed getting to meet Denise, um, amazing woman, um, who is absolutely positively proud of her family and knows what it means to um, do the work um, in the community and in the home as a family. And so she and her husband and her children, um, their children, they work together. And so I hope that you enjoy the cooking demonstration tonight. Again, if you want uh, the cooking list so that you can make this meal at home on your own, if you did not get it before today, put your... Um, email in the chat and um, we will send it to you. Is there anything that you want to say to our guests who are with us tonight before you get started? Well, I am truly, um, we are truly honored um, to be here on this afternoon uh, or this evening or for the, for the, the West Coast is probably still just evening. I think you guys are three hours behind us, um, but we're excited. Um, it's a very delicious meal that we're about to uh, make for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I love to cook with my hubby here. So, and it's like we said, you know, it is a family affair. We do enjoy cooking together, but most importantly, nutritional meals and and quick and fast meals because we don't we don't like to stay in the kitchen for a long time. All right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, no, for an opportunity, I hope you enjoy um, what you see. I know I'm gonna enjoy our taste. Uh, if you're cooking with us, you get a chance to enjoy our taste. Um, maybe not from my hands or our hands, but you can enjoy our taste. But no, um, please enjoy. Thank you. All right. So um, it's a kind of a two-part kind of thing. But today, I just wanted to first, yeah, we're taxing, but I want to let you guys know exactly what we are making. We're making salmon kadai with Kali mash, well, cheesy Kali mash. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear Kali mash it doesn't sound as appealing but i promise you you'll enjoy it when you taste it so we're gonna first we're gonna get started with the collie mash because we don't want the salmon to to wait on it so um 
let's kind of move over to the cutting board and we'll get started there. Interesting. Yeah. So we have, um, for those of you who don't have our our shopping list, you know, for the Kali mash, it's very simple. There's not a whole lot of ingredients. We have some chicken broth or stock. You can use bone broth. You can choose chicken broth. You can use bone broth, like, like I said, vegetable broth or stock. You know, with any, either of those would, would, would do just fine. So he's bringing over the, the collie. So what we did was um, we used one head of cauliflower. Of course, you wash it, you chop it, and you boil it uh, until it's tender. Uh, some people like it mushy, some don't. It just really depends on your texture, you know, if you're a texture person or not. But it's just, it's very similar to how you would do mashed potatoes. It's just a, a healthier version. Cauliflower is not, um, it doesn't have as much starch as white potato would have. Thank you. Um, so this is what it looks like. If you guys can see it, let me see. There you go. All right. Do you want to mash it? All right, well, I got a helper over here. So that way you free free to- I can put the, okay. So, that's the cauliflower. It's already boiled or steamed. And I'm just adding um, some garlic powder. And a little bit of avocado oil. I love to use avocado oil as opposed to, I mean, you can also use olive oil if you'd like, um, but I like to use avocado oil. It's, it's a natural fat burner as well, but you're getting some healthy fats in there. I went for so much. You go ahead and mash. While he's mashing, I'll just add a little bit of stock. Not too much. Cauliflower does have a lot of, um, it retains a lot of water. Come on, get in there. You got strong arms. I don't want to break the bowl. Well, we don't want to break what's under here either. Okay, and we're going to add some dairy-free mozzarella cheese, shredded, and some Parmesan cheese at the same time. Mash, mash, mash. Oops. Maybe if you miss yeah, you're making a mess. Go on, keep mashing. And like I said, it just depends on your texture. Um, you know, what the texture that you like. And if you use a food processor. And you can also use a food processor. We're just using a potato masher just for um our recording and our video because of the noise. Okay. You're out. <laughs> um, they were you're out of focus. On this one, on, on the bigger this one. one, yeah. Well, you want to see me here too? Well, it's it, because of how the camera is set, you're not gonna see both of us at the same time probably. But let's see if we can adjust it a little bit. Am I in focus? Let's go a little more. <laughs> All right, so this is very therapeutic, by the way. Now, cauliflower, while we're mashing, it has a lot of, like I said, nutritional values. It's it's a very low-carb vegetable. Uh, studies will have it to say that it does help 
with cancer. You can get your vitamin C and K out of it. It's very, very high in fiber. So I tend to um, side with poly as opposed to mashed potatoes. Now, if you want, you can do, you can mix a little white potato alongside with the, the cauliflower to kind of give it more of an even texture. But this is um, just more on a, just to keep it on a streamlined health basis. This is, I usually just stick with the cauliflower by itself because I'm getting that fiber. That's one of the rules that I tell my kids, you know, I don't mind you having one of your, I would say something that you like to eat that, but not necessarily that it's really good for you. But at the same time, if you're going to eat it, then it has to have all these different things. You've got to have your fiber in there. You need to have a protein in there. You need to have, of course, your vegetable. You need to have, you know, all those things that, that is necessary and needed, you know, for the building blocks to give you the energy throughout the day. Yeah. You can stop now. Because right, I will keep washing. Washing it all right, so Kali mash is all done. Awesome, so awesome. Now we're going to shift a little bit. And we're going to get our salmon going. All right. So the salmon is going. Uh, well, not going, but the pot is on. We're getting, we're waiting for that to heat up. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna just mash my little cauliflower a little bit more because, again, I like a specific texture. Stay, so this already like it. I just turn it on. Yes. Cool. So, I'm gonna go ahead and mash some more. I should do it, I should do it. Now, salmon kadai, it's a derivative. It's, it's, a, it's an Indian dish. I fell in love with this particular Indian dish, having it the first time when we lived in Maryland. And so every time I go to an Indian restaurant, it's one of those things that I, it's a must have for me to order. All right, you go ahead and do what you do, Mr. Gordon. All right, so the way this works is you want to put the get hot. So I'm trying to let it heat up a little bit. And then once that happens, I'm going to add some oil to it. Uh, when, when we wrote the recipe, we say add about three, four tablespoons of oil. I'm pretty good at um, estimating my spoons. So I'm just going to. Wing it from the pot. We call them eye measurements. I'm going to go ahead and start pouring them. Okay. So that's one spoon. That's two spoons. Three yeah, spoons. <laughs> Everdine College doing a food thing. Or smooth. Right. Is that in there? So What's usually that? we put the earth, I like the earthy seasonings in there and herbs in there. So this is rosemary and sage. I don't know if you can see. And there's some thyme in there. Thyme. Well. Right. And I like to put it in the oil because it lets me know that the oil is ready when it starts giving me a popping song. Yeah, I'm possibly. Oh, okay. My ass is not on. Okay. Just to cover up this slide. So I know it's evening time. If you guys are not cooking with us, I'd like to know if you could put it in the chat. What did you cook for dinner today? Or what are you going to have? Anybody can guess what this is? Scotch bonnet pepper. We call it scotch bonnet pepper in the Caribbean. If you go to most grocery stores, they, they call it habanero peppers. They're really not the same. 
So we grow our, most of our herbs, we grow ourselves in our own backyard, including the scotch bonnet peppers as well. Is that a bay leaf? That's the bay leaf. All right, so I got me some Bisland bay leaf in here. And I like to put these in the oil first also because it flavors the oil. For the um, for the roux. So you, you're creating different layers of flavor in here. All right, so I'm going to add, we call these pimento seeds. Pimento, pimento, can you see my hand? Pimento seeds in Jamaica, so four little pimento balls. Some people crush them in, or you can get them in powder. There's also a name called allspice, uh, all purpose seasoning for some other people who don't know. Huh? All right, so those go in there. All right, so my oil is still waiting. Oh, while we're waiting on the oil, here's a fun fact. Did you know that thyme, if you use thyme essential oil, it has a lot of health benefits, but one specific health benefit would be it's really good for your hair. Um, it helps with hair loss. It helps with if you have, um, if you suffer from you know, itchiness, psoriasis, you know, your scalp itches a lot, you can use essential oil. Of course, you chase it with another um, carrier oil, such as ojoba, coconut oil, or grapeseed oil. And if you use that on your scalp, it will help to um, mitigate your hair loss issues for those of us who have hair loss issues. All right, so... If, all right, so the oil is, is going, can you hear the sizzling and the popping? Probably not. Probably not, right? It, sound, <laughs> it sounds like music to my ears. But, so I'm going to show you something. So this, the scotch bonnet pepper, I put it in whole because, I mean, you can cut it up if you want to, but if the seeds are exposed, it adds more heat. So the kids don't really like a lot of spicy foods, right? They, they'll tolerate it to a certain degree, but their the tolerance is not as high as myself. So I usually just leave it whole. All right, so now that the oil is going, I like to add my onions. Okay, and what we're doing is we're setting the base for the roux. So the roux is gonna be where the magic happens in this kadai. Hi, Gordon Benling. I have a question. Would yes. your, your, your pimento seeds um, what if I can't find those pimento seeds? Can I use the allspice ground uh, seasoning for that? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Absolutely. It's going to give you um, pretty much the same flavor components. So that's what you're building for. Um, okay. And that's the goal. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry, I'm done with that. That goes into my collie match. Right. So I'm trying to get this thing that's a pretty pot. It's beautiful. So if you didn't know, I added some bell peppers. And this is a half a bell pepper cut up. This is a half a onion. Half an onion cut up. And then I have some cherry tomatoes also in here. Um cut up. Okay. One thing when we're cooking, we, I love to have a pot that has very different colors. Um, it just does something, I don't know, it plays with my emotion, I guess, maybe, but a variety of colors, um, it's, you know, you have your green, you have your red, you have your orange, and it's very warming, it's just a pretty pot, but it's more appealing, especially um, when you're dealing with kids, uh, we often say that, what you're looking for? yes, when you're, um, when you're, when you're, when you're cooking for kids, um, they eat with their eyes and adults too, right? We eat it with our eyes. And so if it's appealing, then you it, it will you'll more be susceptible to trying it, especially if it's something that you've never had before. Sami Kadai is not something that a lot of people have ever had before. It's an Indian dish. It tends to be spicy, but with the right heat and the variety of different colors and flavors, I promise you, you'll try it. And that's with any food. If you just add a little bit of color to to your plate, even if you're not cooking it, but just in your plating, um, it does it changes the whole ambiance of your plate. All right, so green onions. 
Product. So that's about, it looks like about two stocks. Yeah. That's pretty good. It smells yeah. delicious. It smells good. So it's funny because this right here gives me a childhood memory. Just just these herbs and spices and seasonings in oil um, simmering like this. gives me a great childhood memory because I remember growing up in Jamaica, sometimes we didn't have the proteins or anything. We just had this stuff. And we will just cook this down um, until it's nice and soft and put it over some rice and eat it. And it was delicious. We, I mean, you add some seasoned salt to it, like, you know, salt or black pepper and stuff like that. But that was it. And it, and it was very nutritious and very um, delicious. And I know, you know, the, 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 the theme for tonight is the art of resistance, you know, we're talking about black history, right? We're talking about, you know, some of the, the roots of what was, you know, what what was it like before my time and before many of our times. And salmon wasn't something that we were able to eat, right? We we got scraps or whatever it is they gave us, you know, we, we had to make do with what we had and we had to eat it. Um, but times have changed. Um and it, it may not have changed for uh drastically for some, but it has changed. And so how can we use what we have and make it more beneficial for us as, you know, people of color, you know, I was speaking to someone the other day and I said, you know, we have to, some of us have to drive further um, to get really fresh produce and, and good meat that's the marinade. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. Um, you know, good selection of meats and produce, and you know, all good, all that stuff. You know, within our community, sometimes it's hard to 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 get the different fruits and vegetables that we need. You know, that our body needs. Um, but if we are able to, we are creative people. That's one thing about our culture. We are some creative minds, and we kind of just think outside the box and learn to use what we have, just like we did in the past. But, you know, we have more resources available. So learn to use what we have so that we can live longer, you know. And even with our children, you know, I often say, you know, my parents did, they did the best that they could with what they had. But now that I have more than what they had growing up, I'm able to do more with my children. And that's the, the thing. That's the cycle that we're trying to change with how we eat, right? I remember growing up, you don't leave the table unless your your plate is completely clean. It doesn't matter what was on that plate, but you needed to eat it all. And so that's something that's systemic that, you know, I, I say with my kids, okay, this is a healthy meal, but if you're full, you don't have to eat all of it. You know, knowing when to stop, knowing what to eat, knowing our limits. Those are just some of the nutritional healthy habits that we are trying to push through, right? You know, not always following that food pyramid that is really, it's not, it, they, the world or the country or I don't know, FDA would have it to say it's a one size fits all, but it's not. It's not a one size fits all because we're unique in our own way. Our body structure is different. The way we, we um, absorb food is very different. And so it's just knowing our bodies, paying attention, and knowing what foods to eat and how those food, when we eat those foods, how do how the, how, how does our body respond? Okay. okay, so what we have here now going. I on. just added the um, Joe's marinade. If you don't have the marinade that we use, because I just I created this marinade to make life simple um, for ourselves when cooking. It's easy and quick. But if you don't have that, um, you can just use seasoned salt. You can use any any kind of seasoned salt that you prefer. Uh, it would change the taste depending on the seasoned salt. But all right, so this is curry and turmeric. Adding this to it, and then I'm gonna add or um. My life. No, you're perfect. You're never in my way. I'm never in your way. No. Told you guys, we have fun when we're cooking, which is what the kitchen is supposed to to be fun, you know, eating healthy should not feel like a drag. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it doesn't have to be. 
you can still eat the your the foods that 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 you desire that are pleasurable for you, but just make them a different way. That's all. You want to tell them about the um benefits of the turmeric? Oh yeah, turmeric. It's like a gold mine. It's it, it's it's it has so many health benefits. I um I use it every single day. It's 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 great for inflammation. It's great for your skin. You can make a paste out of it for your skin. You can even use it as a, a, a mask. Uh, like you can use it to brush your teeth. Um, you can use it, like I said, at night, if you have um, muscle issues or having a hard time sleeping, you can make, uh, there's different variations if you Google the golden broth, tea or soup. Turmeric is one of those staples. It's the best night's sleep I promise you you'll ever have. But it's really it's a, it's a great anti-inflammatory root. Um, you you can get the root or you can get the the grounded powder. Either one works just fine. We typically um have both. It just depends on what we're using it for. Sometimes I make a cold press juice out of the turmeric. Of course, I add other things to it, and I tell you. It's very good. It gives you energy, and it, it's also great for your digestive system as well. All right, so the roots prepared. This is what the salmon is going to see in the neighbor. This is what our salmon looks like, if you can see it. Okay. Hi, Gordon family. So, the last thing that you uh, put in was that. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was the, I'm sorry. Oh. So that was the um, tomato marinara that we put in here. Um, it's a mar marinara sauce. Yeah, and so you can use that, or you can use tomato. Um, tomato paste. You can use tomato paste, but with the tomato paste, you have to kind of like water it down a little bit to not make it too um dense. So you can use tomato paste and add some stock to it, just to thin it out some, and and to cut back a little bit on the acidity of it. All right. So for the salmon. All right, so if you if you guys ever do get the cookbook, it says five pieces of salmon. Uh, we, I usually cook for the size of my family. So I have a, 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 a son in college, glory be to God, right now. So that reduces the size of the family. So right now- So now we have four. So we're using four pieces of salmon. But you don't have to use four. You can use, um, you know, one, two. But, you know, cooking this way, you know, eating healthy, Meal prep is important, right? To, to be consistent with healthy eating and healthy eating habits. So even if you made this much, you know, you have something to eat for the next day and the day after that, or you can freeze it. Um, like I said, I'm, we're firm believers in, in not spending over 30 minutes, 45 minutes tops in the kitchen. And if I don't have to cook every day, we cook enough to last for a few days that way. Because like I said, you know, eating healthy, I know it can be a drag or it might feel like a drag for some people but preparation is always important and it's easier that way and anything um secret was official it was usually really quick you don't take long to make um oh yeah and so in preparation for the salmon i um, washed and cleaned it with uh, vinegar um to cut out some of the lines and all that good stuff about it so um we put it in skin the salmon in skin side down um, okay. You can cover it up, usually about for four or five minutes. Take it up, go and flip it, fit it for about maybe two minutes. Um, <laughs> usually put the salmon until the the uh the seeds starting to lose like a white juice or something like that. But I don't like my my salmon like overly done because it comes dry. I like when it's a little bit moist. So when you bite into it, it's like it doesn't melt in your mouth. So that's what we're trying to go for today. you want to tell them what inspired you to make your marinade? What inspired me? Mm -hmm. um, what inspired me? So it, it's a couple, couple of things for inspiration. Um, for one, anytime I eat something, I always try to go back to like childhood memories of the first time biting into something and getting that experience of, ooh, this is good. Um, and so uh, I always try to recreate those flavors um, from my childhood. And then the next inspiration comes from my family. Um, you know, I want to see the experience on their faces when they 
kind of like experience what I experienced as a child, right? So kind of move towards the kids um, and giving them something to, to eat from one, my heritage, two, um, they're getting something to eat that is healthy and they can say, ooh, I didn't know this was healthy. This is just so good, right? Because it's a challenge with feeding children. Um, and then, you know, of course, my wife always is a big inspiration for me. Um, uh, you know, I can I can safely say that I should end up being my wife because of the cooking. Oh. <laughs> you know, the first time I made her something and she ate it, she was like, she lit up. It was like, oh my God, this is so good. And we've been married ever since. He's telling a story, guys. But um, I didn't go into depth of the story. No, I, mean, I can if you want to. I don't think we have time. No, um, but he is a phenomenal cook. But part of I think part of the reason why the marinade came about. Our kids love sauce. They are sauce kids. Everything got to have some type of sauce or gravy. And so, you know, it, 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 that's just um, how I, I believe um, his marriage came about. And so much so. Oh, right here. So you see, it's starting to lose a little bit. So I got to flip it. If I don't, it's going to dry out. Oh, that's pretty. Right there, it smells better than how, how it looks, to be honest with you. And I'm pretty sure it's going to taste better than how it smells. Another side that goes really well with salmon kadai, non bread. Uh, if you're bread lovers like my family yeah, are, we bread. love anything with bread. We're carb eaters, which is why. We, any, you know, every opportunity we are able to substitute something that's high carb to something that's low carb, we take advantage of that because we just love bread. Um, but there are some grain-free uh, non-breads out there. I call them tortillas because they're a little bit thinner. But you can very much so make your own because we talk about those processed stuff, right? Things that's already in the, the grocery store. Um, I typically make my own tortilla, and it's really only three to four ingredients. Same with our pizza dough. I make my own pizza dough. We do a lot of things from scratch here at home. And I, like I said, planning is important. We have a family of five. So we the weekends, I'm spending my weekends planning out the rest of the week in bulk, freeze what I need to freeze, uh, and whatever can last for two to three days, it's in the refrigerator. And it's the best way. Mentally, it'll help you to stay on track. But remember, healthy eating is not just a gimmick. It's literally, literally a lifestyle, right? We choose to live, right? We don't eat just to live, but we we, we have to choose to live. Because eating just to live, that can mean so many different things for so many different people. What does that look like if you don't have that healthy lifestyle um, in check. Um, so while, how much longer before the salmon? So how like right now. Okay. I guess it depends can on ask, the fitness of Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. so sure. I noticed when you turned the salmon over, um, you wanted to keep all of the um, marinade on the bottom still, right? You didn't turn the marinade as well, or does that not matter? No. It, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. matter okay. You're just really just trying to get the salmon and cook because it's bathing in a marinade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. besides if he has a loop bath, let's see the salmon is going. Yeah. So all this can come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come. Oh, yeah. So another thing is, let me shift this over a little bit. I don't want to dry it in. The next thing is um, I cooked it on high. So if anyone wants to know the temperature setting for how you're going to cook it, uh, fish is usually good or best cooked on high. Um, I'm going to get my. And so that's the process. Uh, and the way everything is set up, it's a fat, it's a fast cook dish. So you basically have to monitor it and throw your ingredients in as um, as quickly as you can. As soon as everything is kind of like caramelizing in the pot, then you know you're making the roux, and then you're going to add your protein because fish takes very little time to cook, you know, it's not going to be on there for long. So cook time, um, totally, um, to be about 15, 20 minutes. It just depends on how fast you move. Then you have to do your prep work with cutting up everything. Then you, you can push it to about 25 to 30 minutes, depends on how fast you cut up stuff. So that's about it. Okay. You guys see, I have my plate ready. I'm ready for plating because it smells really, really good in here. So 
I already painted our collie mash. All right. So, so I want to see if I can find the juiciest one. Give me a juicy one, sir. <laughs> All right. Can we come closer? Pardon my plating skills. It's been a minute. And then you want some other room? Yeah, you want to use this? I can use it. I can use whatever you want. Okay. 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 Do you, you don't want the pepper in it? No, I'm good. I'll take the pepper. Okay. Okay. Let's start All right. I'm going to move that over just a little bit. I'm going to take what's up. This little bit. You want to move this whole cooking? That would be nice if you are cool. careful. I didn't see it. Just be careful. Yeah. <laughs> And so to go with that, what I did was I just made a, a green salad. I told you, I um, since you have your gloves on, can you just put some salad on this? Please? Not a, yeah. Well, I'll just use the fork since it's just me. Okay. And in my salad, I have some cucumbers. I have some arugula. I have um, some onions, lettuce, romaine lettuce. And because I have all this sauce goodness going on here, I not really, would you mind doing something? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I don't, I'm not a, a salad dressing person per se, but you can use any type of salad dressing. We make our own ranch dressing, which is really, really good. It's made out of coconut milk. Um, because we are a gluten and dairy free family, which is a little bit more easier on the stomach, but you can easily put a vinaigrette on here. What would be really good to pair this with is a really nice lemongrass vinaigrette salad dressing. Um, I can, we, I don't have the recipe to share with you um, tonight, but I want to take a bite into this really quick. And if you did cook, please share pictures. Oh my God. Good. Hey, and so another cue, if you don't have the Joe's marinade, right? Not gonna taste as good as this. But if you want to use OBA Kings, OBA, OBA is pretty nice on, on seafood. A lot of people love that. But it will also complement the whole experience. Okay. I'm going to, can you hold this for a second? I'm going to slide it's hot. I wanted to move this so I can put the um the uh, wait. In focus, it's hot. Let's see what I can do. See, there, it's in focus. All right. Yeah. So that's dinner, what sir. we wanted to see. We wanted to see the plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do not, I will, let me bring it down a little bit closer so that you guys can, can really see. You guys see it? Yes. Doesn't that look doesn't that look delicious, guys? I mean, it tastes delicious. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and look, how long did it take us to make that? Yeah, to do from airtime. How long have we been up there? It wasn't that long. Cauli the cauliflower usually takes, depending on how much you're making, about seven to eight, maybe 10 minutes, ten if minutes, that long, minutes. to boil. And the mashing is pretty easy. And you can speed that process up by putting it into a food processor, which is typically what I usually do at home anyway. But like I said, for the noise, I didn't want it to be disturbing to anyone. But if you add that in and your salmon, you can literally have this in 30, 40 minutes tops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you come home from work and you have the kids and you're rushing and maybe the you know the kids have a, a game or practice or coming home late from game or practice, this is like a 30 minute um, to 40 minute dish. You can just throw them together and put out for them. And it's like very delicious and very nutritional. 
So as you're, um, that, that looks delicious. And um, you're making us hungry. And for those of us that are on the East Coast, it's too late to eat. So, <laughs> um, but um, as, as you're uh, talking about your preparation and, you know, so part of the challenge is shopping for people. Um, do you have helpful tips on, you know, choosing produce and, you know, buying organic when it's really expensive and, and those kinds of things that would be helpful to people so that, you know, again, um, people have healthier choices, but are able to budget to do that. Right. So I know for myself, because well, this is what I was going to say first, but then we can go to the other part is. And this is what we used to, we kind of gone away from it a little bit due to the weather and changes and all this thing, is grow your own stuff. Um, if you can grow your own stuff, if you have the space for it, um, you know, it's it's really easy, just a couple of seeds, put it in the soil, you can grow your own stuff. And that would be one way to limit costs. You know, uh, of course there's a time because you have to wait for it to grow. But if you can harvest, you know, and grow your own harvest, that's great. But if not, then we usually go to farmers market. Farmers market. Farmers market. Um, here in the Atlanta area, there are several, and I know in some of the other small towns, even if you're not in the Atlanta area, I pretty pretty much know every state has a farmers market. I used to live in Washington State. There. Are Tons yeah. of farmers market. I used to live on. I mean, <laughs> I would go to the farmers market at least two, three times a week. And before I made it home, I'm coming home. I'm eating half of my berries, you know, stuff like that. So I know there are several out there in Washington State as well. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, you can do price comparison. Organic is usually the best way to go for sure. But what I'm finding out is what's really organic, unless you've grown it yourself, sometimes it's very hard and it's challenging to really determine if you're really getting um, the most out of what you're buying as far as the nutrients. Uh, so it's a hit and miss. And you won't really know, like I said, unless you've, you've grown those things yourself. Um, but for price-wise, farmer's market, hands down, if you're able to get there. If not, if you're not able to get to a farmer's market, um, price checks, you know, different stores, you know. Yeah. Um, grocery shopping for us is not just one store. Yeah. Um, I start off first with my farmer's market, whatever I don't get there, then there's three, four different stores I literally have to go to different for different things to make, to, to make my grocery shopping complete. Yeah. You know, you're talking about fresh market. I don't shop at Trader Joe's really because for one, it's out of my way. And two, I just don't think it's, um, I don't get the things that I need from Trader Joe's. Sprouts is another store. I don't know where, you know, where people on here from different places. So it's just really what's in your community, in your neighborhood, but get to know the different stores in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, like I said, the farmer's market. Now, as far as like, we make salmon today, right? It was wild caught. When it comes down to fish in particularly, I, I don't do farm raised fish. I know it's expensive, but if you can't buy wild caught, then just don't eat. I My recommendation, I try not to eat it because I'm not sure what it is that they're putting into it. And something foreign can cause more harm than good to my body. This is just my personal take on it. And even as a nutritionist, I I, I tell people, I tell my, my clients, you know, if you're not able to get wild caught, uh, fish, then don't buy it. Uh, as far as chicken, you know, we've seen the difference. I bought chicken in Publix as opposed to the farmer's market. Trust me, it tastes very different. Yeah. It cooks different. It cooks faster. The farmer's market chicken will cook a whole lot faster than if I bought my chicken from Publix. So I get it as far as price-wise. It, 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 it's costly, but and I know this sounds not harsh, but if you're if, if you're not putting the, the money in in your food, you're it's going somewhere else, you know, whether it's at a doctor's office or medication, stuff like that. So as as um 
as 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 the people, right? That we're here, we're trying to get on this healthy journey. Start small, make small changes. You may not be able to buy everything all at once in one grocery shopping that's organic, but start small. You know, I may not be able to buy organic chicken today, but I probably can buy a piece of wild caught fish. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly work your way up. And the reason why I say that this is a very effective method. I remember on my journey initially, um, I saw someone cooking and they were using olive oil and they bought this, it was a big bottle. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you have expensive olive oil. And I'm like, I would never buy olive oil to cook with. It's just too expensive. And as I started my own health journey, I'm buying two, three, four gigantic Oh, wow. jars of olive oil a month the same for avocado oil you can't get me to use any other oil besides those two oils and so but it was a gradual process so healthy eating is not something that you have to do all at once you don't throw out the whole kitchen sink and your, your whole entire pantry you know, especially if it's going to break the bank, but make small changes and slowly work your way up to it and before you know it you'll realize that extra cup of coffee that I used to buy every day, that money can go into me buying a pack, a small pack, maybe not a big family size pack, but a small pack of organic chicken, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just those little small things, you know? We, we sometimes think that we have to do it all at once, but it's you're trying to establish a, a, a habit first. Then you'll be able to maintain it as time goes on. So that's that's that would be my recommendation, Sharda. Thank you. Well, to the rest of our guests who are here, do you have any other questions for the, the Gordons who cook together and um, who are on this healthy journey? And, you know, they've shared with us that it's incremental change, not drastic change. And, um, and so we want to thank you for that. Any other questions or thoughts? I do actually. Um, yeah. So you mentioned your garden and um, I'm curious how much time you spend growing things and, you know, planning a garden and all of that. That's something that um, my family and I, we, you know, we work on sometimes successfully, sometimes not, <laughs> but um, it's always so amazing to have produce from your, you know, your own property. So is that a big um, part of your health journey? It is because um, so for me, the garden is like another child. <laughs> and so you literally have to spend time with it, um, you know, for it to develop into, you know, what you want it to be, right? Um, like with children, you spend time with them for them to develop in, you know, who they're supposed to be in the future. Um, and so, and then... <laughs> My wife, she has like a crazy green thumb. <laughs> so for us growing, so I have a green thumb, but hers is like super green. I think all her fingers are green more than just a thumb. And so <laughs> she is anything she touches, it grows. She will just throw seeds somewhere and it would, it would just grow, right? It's almost like she didn't have, really have to do much labor. That's a gift. Um, as for me, I have to like literally till the soil, move the rocks, you know. <laughs> dress it up sow the seed like she just throws it down and then grows um even with that she even created her own pepper like she created a frosty pepper by accident no way um, oh my gosh yeah, I, I wish you had a, a, a to show you no. it's, it's pretty cool it's like a, i don't know what, what do you call it the hybrid pepper hybrid we call it the hybrid, oh, the hybrid. So, wow cool. that's amazing it, and it tastes really good so it's it was a mixture of our scotch bonnet pepper with bell peppers <laughs> yeah and it created it created an offspring that's it, it was it's kind of cool looking because at first we thought it was the actual scotch bonnets were coming up um it came up almost the same way and then it kind of like shifted over into like a baby bell slash it's wow. i don't know if we know banana peppers it's it's kind of weird looking it's yeah. hard to describe it's, it has like <laughs> it has like three hips at, at the bottom 
<laughs> and 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 about that. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So, right. It's, it, 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 it's a very, it's a savory it's pepper. Savory. It's so, not hot and it's not sweet. It's like so it has like a nice sweet and spicy taste. If that yeah. makes sense. Wow. My, my youngest will say so. It's a very, it's a savory. You know, it's like a nice balance with salt and sweet. <laughs> so in this case, it's a balance with salt. And if you pick, it, it turns out pretty good. It's a pickle. So, um. <laughs> That we do, we also do pickling of stuff, and so we'll pickle like onions and peppers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's it, to pickle it in a bit, it's pretty good. And so um, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, the gardening it takes a lot of time. I mean, later you have to be out here because you gotta try to get rid of the pests. Um, yeah, you have to, right. You know, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the pest is more trouble than anything else. Yeah. But so I to, find we find different herbs research that we can plant that would ward off ward some of so we plant certain yeah. herbs next to certain plants to kind of like keep certain things away so yeah. it's kind of like yeah yeah it's it's a crazy science <laughs> it is, it is. So it's, it's really complex yeah. yeah but you know and then of course he said time you know I, for me it's therapeutic i go out every morning before the sun comes up, them. I literally sing to my plants and every, my garden. Oh I know it's weird. I oh sing. My goodness. Talk to, I talk to them. Uh, I it's like school. we're having this whole conversation, and then I go back and I do it again in the evening when the sun goes down. So, you know, for me, it's I don't know, just something for me, but it's even more gratifying when I can go back there with a basket and I come back in mm -hmm. my house and I lay everything that I you know hard harvest and I can cook you know I'm cooking with it and and then family will come and visit and, oh, and, give them and we can take. give them stuff to take and or they can go out there and get Pick what they home. need and come and make something here in the kitchen so you know it's it's very fulfilling uh, and that's why I said mm -hmm. if you're able to plant your you know some of the stuff that you know you use on a daily basis um you know do it even if you have to go to the, the store or the market to, to buy some more of those things, you're not spending half as much as opposed to, yeah. you know, because you have some surplus, right? You're not buying everything all at once. We try to things too. And we freeze a lot of mm -hmm. our stuff. And then you, you restate, you, you save your seeds and dry. And like you said, um, some years better than some, you know, depending on the weather, depending on the winter we had, you know, depending on the summer that we had. One summer, nothing lasts. Everything was just, it, it, yeah. looked, it looked like someone used a blowtorch and just fried everything. And it was a very, 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 very One hot two. summer. And winter was the same thing. So, you know, we're trying to find different ways of how we can save some of our things during those times, you know, during the weather so that we're not having to start over or making more. And it's tough if you don't have like a climate control space. So yeah. that's where the new challenge comes in. Yeah. Yeah. We had a uh, we had a question in the chat. How did you make your hybrid pepper? <laughs> Miracle? No, no. <laughs> that was an excellent, like I said, I don't know. So because I don't know how that came about, I saved my seeds. <laughs> so so, I so this is what happened. I put her in charge of sowing seeds one year. <laughs> and I don't know. So we usually like start in a small container with peat moss and stuff like that. And she sowed a whole bunch of things in there. And I think she sowed two different kinds of peppers together without knowing. So when they when they started to grow, they fused, they end up fusing together and becoming its own plant it was it was kind of cool because when i was monitoring and watching it grow it, said it again oh shoot i uh, i'm so sorry i should have muted this oh oh no you're no, i have my mom i apologize i have my mom who's in atlanta um and i wanted oh. her to listen so she's on my phone and i wanted her to listen so she can practice and try to do the same thing because her fingers all 10 and her toes are green Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, so it, it was a miracle. Like she put it down, and it, it started looking like it was gonna be um, habanero slash scotch scotch bonnet, and then it I, when we I, I kind of saw two different kind of plants growing together. I was like, wait, this is not 
how many are, oh, I know what this one is. So wait, this is, is this a bell pepper? <laughs> and then, the next, so and then the next thing we know, it became one plant, like, because they were close together. So it became one plant. It's almost like they fell in love, you know, <laughs> and got married. Um, and then they produced children. That's what happened. So it was, <laughs> so, so it was definitely, definitely um, across <laughs> But it was it was delicious. <laughs> it, and, and like I said, it happened that one year, and so we've been replanting it, replanting it every year since then. I save my seeds, I dry them myself, and then I plant them again. So, so how did you guys become um, where you are now? What made you? get to the place that you're you're at now with your cooking and um growing your own food and so on i don't know so we so this is this is a journey right and it's and it's like two parts so for myself i just like like cooking and like investigating food and trying different things but it all began with with her and it's her health journey that took us down that route because um, we had to figure out how to cut out some things, make some changes and, and eat cleaner. Um, and in doing so, we we found out that the way our diet shifted and how we ate was not um, complemented by, you know, restaurants. You know, we go to a restaurant and they really couldn't feed us because they, they wouldn't have what we eat, right? And that was maybe about a couple of years ago, like 10 years ago, and in, in, in I guess in the essence of things, maybe a little bit more, maybe 12, so maybe about 10, 12 years ago. And so um, back then, now you find out there's a lot more restaurants who are offering gluten-free and offering a little bit more um, variety of um, dishes compared to back then where it wasn't as common, right? It wasn't a big thing. So um, you go out and eat and we like, you have gluten-free, dairy-free. They're like, what's that? You know, and they look at us weird. So um, we figured, hey, I like eating pizza. I like eating cheesecake. I like eating these things, um, but I can't do dairy and I can't eat gluten. So we got to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that was the start of the journey for us. It's like, we literally had to figure out how to eat, make the things that we love to eat, that is that we find pleasing or, um, you know, delightful and make it, healthy so we can still enjoy it um and so if we go to a restaurant or from a memory of eating something you'd be like okay this is what this tastes like this is what that tastes like let me see if i can recreate that flavor and so that's where it kind of began with us as far as the type of um food or nutritional route we prepare our foods the way we do now as far as um the, the cooking together like this um we we do it for the for us and for the children okay we also have a my youngest, he has like a plethora of like. So, food, yeah, food yeah. intolerances food that was, was really the like root that. cause, the root to what so the food intolerance there. started it. But then when the pandemic hit, that's when we literally kind of like started doing more growing of stuff because um, we had the time. Um, we were no longer taken away into the business of being in the office in the building somewhere. So, we're home working from home. So, we we're like, hey, Let's just grow our own stuff. You know, we couldn't go to the stores. We couldn't, um, you know, buy a lot of things uh, in person. You probably would do some things from, you know, ordering online, but some things you weren't getting fresh, right? So we just had to start growing our own stuff. And so that kind of like led to the gardening part and growing our own stuff. Um, and then cooking together just developed within that. You have anything to add out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, going back to the root cause, <laughs> the root of what, wow, what, what really drove us here? Cooking with with each other is always something that we usually do at home anyway. Um, but what really was the driving factor? Of course, you know, like my husband shared, I had some health challenges about 10, 12 years ago. And, you know, we thought we were eating well. We knew we weren't eating properly, but, um, you know, I had, like I said, some health challenges and on a plethora of different medications and of course none of which were helping and so I just ran into this naturopathic holistic doctor and and just 
he just literally in 60 days, you know, I took me, I was able to come off of all my medications except for one. And then the rest were supplements, but the majority of it was my nutrition. Mm -hmm. And in 60 days, she was able to reverse half of the things that I was dealing with that, you know, she literally thought I was about to have a heart attack. You know, some of my labs were just ridiculous in the military at the time my husband was in the military they it was not alarming to them you know and for her she was like you're like a what a, a, a someone literally waiting to just pass out and die you know and 60 days you know and and so that got me thinking right but it was challenging I will tell you this as much as I would say at the time he loved cooking more than I did he was better at it anyway he still He's still better, she, I think. She's, um, she's, but it was challenging because, you know, we talked about earlier about healthy eating and healthy habits, right? And and I, I always say, you know, which I will address at some point, you know, um, nutrition and the relationship it has with our mind, right? Our behavior, you know, what we have, what we, the, that relationship that we have, it's usually the driving point of what we eat and how we eat it and where we eat it. Mm -hmm. And so it was hard. I was like, I'm having to literally retrain my brain of how to eat certain things, when to eat it, how to make it. And it was very hard. And so to make it easier on us, we all ate that way. Yeah. You know, I was like, we're not cooking four pots, four different pots. Everybody's going to eat this way because here's the thing. If I'm having these health challenges, these kids came from me. 95% mm, of the chin at the time is a hereditary thing or some gene thing. So we're just going to fix everybody while we're going along this journey together. And so, and, and why not try to get the kids on board while they're young anyways, because it's harder for an adult as it is for a child. And so we all started to eat this way. Like I said, my husband at the time still is the better cook. So I leaned heavily on him trying to figure out how to incorporate these new healthy eatings. You know, gluten was something I couldn't have. You know, I couldn't sugar. My body is to this day very allergic. There is such a thing as being allergic to sugar. And so as much as he said, you know, I want to eat the things that I used to eat, but cook it, eat, eat it differently or prepare it differently. There are some things that I really just can't have. Like my body is just like, no, <laughs> you just can't have it. But that's really what was the root cause. Now, what even propelled us even more was our youngest. He has way more um, food intolerances and allergies than I do. And so it just got me thinking, you know, as a family, right? Can't go on vacation and enjoy because of how we eat the food restrictions that we have. What if, right? And it's and and some someday there will be a world where a family like mine we can go and enjoy eating without having tummy issues or having any allergic reactions. And but for now, you know, we 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 had to learn how to do that at home, right? And and so it starts from home first, so that you'll be able to recognize when you go out to eat, you know, what to look for, what it's supposed to taste like, and stuff like that. So if we can practice those healthy things at home and experiment more at home then it's you know dining experience will be different mm -hmm. right so that's in a nutshell it's kind of funny because when we go to like a restaurant i like to go out on a date night um you know because we want to still enjoy those things those pleasures you know we literally like go through the menu and say ahead of time yeah before we're choosing places that we know actually to cater to our specific dietary needs, right? And so we're reviewing it. It's like, okay, look, they got, that's gluten-free, that's gluten-free. Okay, okay, that don't have any dairy in it, that, you know, so on and so forth. Right, we can go eat here, you know? Um, they have great reviews, let's try them out. And so we go there, yeah, and kind of like test out their stuff and um, try to find pleasure in those things. And it also pushed us to, um, we're authors of our very first cookbook, right? For So for families like ours, who are starting out on the journey, don't know where to begin. Cause like I said, we didn't know where okay. to start. I mean, we didn't have any, I know those things Amazon. may have had, may have been out on Amazon. I don't know. I never thought to look for them, yeah, not out now, but 
for families like myself or individuals, you know, we wanted to have something out there, you know, just something for you to start with <laughs> um, on your health journey. And come to find out, like, this type of knowledge um, with gluten and dairy and all these different, it it was limited just to the few. Like, it was very few people who knew how to eat, you know, knew how to eat this way and how to prepare things this way. Um, and so for us, it was kind of like, and then the thing, here's another thing, even though you yeah, have gluten-free stuff, dairy-free stuff, it's the taste, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't want to eat that stuff because immediately you're thinking, oh yeah, it's going to taste like cardboard, though. it's going to taste awful. And so um, we just try to do our best to not mimic cardboard. Yeah, we mimic it. it, it <laughs> We're trying to be as close to, but, but it's a high, develop, high fidelity real life as possible, yeah. right? Um, so that that's eating something that you know from memory, okay, this is what this is supposed to taste like. And then, oh, is this really gluten-free? Oh, is this right. gluten So it makes you wonder, is it really like, for example, our cheesecake? You'll never be able to tell that it's gluten and dairy-free because it literally tastes like the, the real deal with the gluten and all the dairy you can think of. But, you know, everything we make has to be palatable to a child's palate. Mm -hmm. Um so if kids, if it's kids approved, it's kid approved. best believe it, it'll be adult approved, right? <laughs> it is, it's a kid tested um, mother approved. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot the slogan. I want to make sure that I read some of the comments in the chat to you. I uh, just wanted to thank, to say thank you for opening your home and sharing your treasured recipes, stories, and food tips with us. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, you know, this, this was wonderful. Thank you to the Gordons. Um, this has been wonderful, and, and uh, it, it falls right in line with the theme of artist resistance, because what you've done tonight is, is shown us how to, to reclaim how to eat healthy for ourselves, when a lot of the times, um, the places where our communities are, they're in food deserts, they don't have options, as many healthy options, and you just share ways in which you can do these things even if you don't have them readily available in your um, grocery stores and, you know, just kind of have a, to, to make some smaller choices. The other thing that you did was you highlighted the importance of family and families working together. Um, and you know that oftentimes as Black families and communities, we get a bad rap for uh, mm -hmm. not having intact families, fathers that are not present, and right. um, again, as as a, as a sign of resistance, what you've just shown us tonight um, in this culinary space um, is is the way in which we do work together as families, in which we do have intact families, the way in which um, we are solid and have some solid things going on, rather than you know living into those narratives that are not necessarily true. Um, they they may be true about lots of groups of people, but <laughs> they may not necessarily always need to follow on us. And so I want to thank you um, for for sharing our in in this this moment in art as resistant on Leap Day <laughs> in 2024, um, as we have celebrated um, throughout this month, um, celebrating our history and our heritage. It's not just Black history, it's American history as well. We make up uh, a large part of, of the, the world around us and what we bring. Uh, and so from our music to our culinary skills, because, you know, we wouldn't have macaroni and cheese <laughs> if it weren't for right. Uh, right. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, man working uh, in, in the background. Uh, making good food, um, you know, mm -hmm. so we, we've learned to turn the, the the leftovers into culinary arts. And, and now it's important for us to even take those things that were leftovers and turn them into things that are healthy for our bodies. And so mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that with us tonight. Thank you for agreeing to be here. Thank you all for celebrating Black History Month with us. Um, whether it's through music, through art, through poetry or literature, through what you eat and what you choose, the way you live and the way you be and have your being, we thank you for being with us. We bid you good night and we give you this blessing. The God who <laughs> from the very beginning spoke and called us good. Spoke yes. and said you have something in you that the world needs. This God is still speaking and speaking to each of us and all of us. 
and invites us to resist the narratives that aren't true about who God spoke us into existence to be and who God needs us to be as we show up in the world. So show up fully as who you are. Allow God's spirit in you to shine. Um, Use your gifts, use your voice, use your talent, use your being to make the world a better place wherever you find yourself today and every day. We are thankful you have been with us. We have been blessed by your presence and we hope that you have been blessed by what we have shared this month. We hope you will join us again for all of our events. But until we meet the next time, go in peace, be wrapped in love, listen for wisdom, share your wisdom, be all that you've been sent in the world to be because someone needs to hear your song. Someone needs to hear your story. Someone needs to know who you are so they can be more of who they've been sent in the world to be. Ashe.